Hello there, it's me, AJ. Um, can you see me good? I hope so. Anyways, I'm coming in to share with you my gumbo recipe. Yes, gumbo. For all the gumbo connoisseurs out there that love it, this is a good recipe for you to try. Um, also, disclaimer, I use chicken. I know a lot of people don't use chicken, don't like chicken and gumbo, say it's not real gumbo if it has chicken. Well, this is some real gumbo and it has real chicken. Anyway, um, yeah, I think that's about it. Let's jump into the video. I'm talking a little quiet because you know when you say you're making gumbo, you start getting people knocking at your door. I'm just trying to keep it on the low. But anyway, let's jump into the video and I'll show you my steps and what I use. Remember to keep an open mind and season to your liking. That's the biggest thing, season to your liking. All right, let's go. So throughout our video, of course, we will incorporate more stuff, but right now, this is what I have done. I have one bell pepper, one green pepper cut small, two cups of celery cut small as well, and then one yellow onion cut small. Now in my huge stock pot, as you can see, you probably see me inside of it, I have a shrimp stock right in there. So when I lift up my pot, my strainer, inside is my stock. All I have is the tail from my shrimp, the shell from my shrimp, a handful of peppercorns, and a whole onion. I boiled that down with about four cups of water to make a quart of shrimp stock. And trust me you guys, yes I know that a lot of people don't cook chicken, but it's really your preference. Gumbo is a personal thing, so it's what you like, what works for you and your family do would taste good for you but here's my chicken boiling eventually this will all fall apart once it all falls apart and breaks apart it's good to go closer look of my shrimp stock it has a nice yellow golden color perfect that's what you want so now we are going to take all these veggies with some butter and we're going to saute it in a skillet you don't want to put raw veggies besides your okra into your gumbo. I have about two tablespoons of butter inside of my skillet. I've let it get warm, so make sure it's melted. And now I'm adding my two cups of celery. My chopped bell pepper. Hi, you look nice. Now we will let this salt, we will let this, you know, cook a little bit. And then after that, we will start to saute it after we let it just sit on its own a while in the butter. This really is the holy trinity of my dishes. If you put some bell pepper, onion, and celery, you're going to have something nice. Let's just let this continue to cook, and then I'll help it a little bit in just a moment. I'll help it along with my spatula. This needs to be translucent. You do not want to bite into gumbo. You don't want to bite into chunks of veggies. Nothing but flavor going on in this kitchen, y'all, and we haven't even added any salt, peppers, Nothing. Just some natural fitness going on. Look at that. I'm OCD, so I have it separated right now. But eventually, I'll stir it all together. How's that chicken coming? Chicken's coming along. Alright. Don't be afraid to let these veggies cook. Let them get translucent. Nice and mixed. My veggies are done. 
Now, what I have right here is my sausages. You guys, get the best sausages you can buy. Don't get hot dogs, nothing like that. That, that doesn't go in gumbo. But what I do have here is some sausage. You can use, of course, andouille sausage. You can use Cajun, whatever you can get your hands on, like I said, but just make sure it's not no hot dogs. Um, yeah, so veggies are done. Here are my sausage. I'm going to put them directly into my quart of shrimp stock. They're going right in here. And then I'm going to let them simmer with the veggies for about 30 minutes. Hunty, if you thought it was over, America lied. Get you a cast iron skillet like this one here. This is perfect. Put a stick of butter. Let that melt and come back to me once you let that melt. Get that butter. While that butter is melting, go ahead and put you a tablespoon of canola oil in there. One tablespoon. My tablespoon of canola oil is going right in. We're going to let this get married. After that, we're going to add two cups of flour. If you haven't already guessed, we are making a roux. I have my two sticks of butter. I know earlier I said to grab a stick of butter, but it should have been grabbed two sticks of butter. So I have my two sticks of butter, my tablespoon of canola, and my two cups of flour. You just want to keep stirring this. This will be a thickening agent for your gumbo. Don't let it burn. So what we're basically doing is cooking out the flour taste of the flour. This takes a while. It could take upward of 30 minutes or more. You want it to start getting golden. Once it gets red, you're good to go. That's how I like mine. burn girl don't let it burn making roux and holding camera we got this it's getting there it's getting there but we're not quite there so soon you'll get out of that creamy lumpy bumpy stage of your flour and you'll start getting this velvety smooth we're almost there but we're not quite there don't give up sis keep going Home stretch coming up. Velvety smooth right now. That's the texture you want. Velvety smooth. So keep going. Almost to the home run. So here is my roux. I've done pretty much this a chocolate brown roux. And I've turned my fire off already. I have an electric stove, so I'll turn that off. And I'm comfortable stopping here. Now, if you are using okra, I have my frozen cut okra here. And I'm just going to add this directly to my pot. My pot is right here. I'm using frozen because to me it cooks a little bit faster and it's a little less slimy. So here's my chicken. I'm also going to add my chicken to my okra sausage stock so let's put that right on in there I add my roux and small portions in just a moment so here's the chicken added now I'll start adding all of my roux and don't worry about the seafood yet we will add that in about the last 15 minutes it doesn't take long to cook and you don't want to overcook it so now it's time to add our roux My roux is pretty velvety. I'm just adding this in completely. It looks like melted milk chocolate. So now let's just add it to our pot. 
Now let's just incorporate everything. My gumbo has a nice red color to it. You cannot go wrong if you find, follow these directions. We'll also start adding in our seasoning now. So here's the seasonings. You know how I said earlier that gumbo is your preference, your personal preference. So I'm not gonna give you any measurements for this. You wanna just season it to your liking. I have some kosher salt, black pepper, Cajun seasoning, parsley, garlic, powder, and onion powder. So now I'll just add that into my pot. Right here I have about 16 ounces of clean crawfish that I'm going to add. It's already been steamed, so now I'll just add this into my pot. So here's my crab. You guys, look at how huge and colossal these king crab legs are. I only got three of those for me and my mom. I'm steaming my shrimp right now. Here's my shrimp right here. They're pink now, so I'll add those to my pot. What I like to do now is add my seafood, get it covered, everything's all in there. Add some gumbo filet powder, crushed red peppers, more seasoning, there's more salt if you need it, and then you'll just let this cook now. You want this to just simmer away. You want to keep it on the low heat, put the top on it, and let it cook for about 15-20 minutes. In total, I have been cooking this pot for some hours. <laughs> so, I'm gonna top it up and let it simmer. Well, that's it. Don't mind me, I'm about to go sit somewhere comfy and eat. You can serve this with some potato salad or some rice. See ya. Bye. Goodness in every bite. Mouth watering. <laughs>